द ब्लाइंड मैन एंड द गर्ल इन द कंपार्टमेंट टॉक अबाउट द ब्यूटी ऑफ द हिल्स इन मुसौरी इन द मंथ ऑफ अक्टूबर वेन द गर्ल टेल्स किम हाउ लकी यू आर आई विश आई वर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू मुसौरी आई लव द हिल्स स्पेशली इन द मंथ ऑफ अक्टूबर द ब्लाइंड पर्सन ए ग्रीज विद हर से इन दैट दैट इज द बेस्ट टाइम the hills are covered with dahlia flowers the sun is very delicious at that time and night and at night you can sit in front of a log fire drink a little brandy most of the tourists have gone and the city is deserted the hills are deserted and october is the best time the man supports what she says here in my remarks zone the beauty of the hills in mussoorie she was silent now the speaker is wondering whether his words had impacted her deeply touched her deeply or whether she considered him as a silly person or a romantic fool then i made a mistake i said something which i shouldn't have later i realized that it was a mistake i asked her what is it like can you describe here in this question she seemed to find nothing strange now the speaker is wondering whether she had already noticed that he is a blind person but then she asked me another question which removed my doubts completely what was my doubt i had a doubt whether she had discovered that i was a blind person but then when she asked me the next question i knew for sure that she did not know that i was a blind man she asked me why don't you look out of the window please if you want to know what nature is like in the month of october just have a look outside look at the things outside why don't you look out of the window she asked me then i moved easily along my seat that is a berth and felt for the window ledge i went to the window and keeping my hand on the ledge window ledge i studied the landscape in fact i pretended to be studying the landscape i heard the panting of the engine i couldn't see anything outside though i was looking through the window but i could hear the panting panting the sound of the engine the rumble of the wheels the rumbling sound of the wheels of the train and in my mind's eye i could see the telegraph poles running by flashing by so i could see nothing but i could hear the sound of the engine the sound of the wheels and in my mind's eye i could see the electric poles the telegraph poles and the trees and the buildings just flashing by me then i asked her have you noticed that trees seem to be moving while we seem to be standing still it's a very very safe statement to be made he asked her look have you noticed when we travel by train or bus the trees and the buildings seem to be moving while we seem to be standing still don't you think so or have you noticed it he asks the girl then the girl says that always happens even when you travel by a bus even when you travel by a car or any kind of any mode of transport the same thing happens do you see animals outside then she asked me another question which put me into trouble do you see animals outside then i said oh no i said quite confidently i knew that there were hardly any animals left in the forest near dehra so i gave an answer saying that i replied that no animals could be seen outside because i was pretty sure that there were hardly any animals left in the forest near dehra at this time i turned from the window after this i turned from the window and faced the girl and for a while we sat in silence so after having this conversation we kept quiet i turned 
from the window just looked at the girl and the sh and the girl too did not seem to be in a mood to uh, talk to me then i told her so as she was keeping quiet as she was silent for a long time i ventured to tell her look you have an interesting face now this remark again is a safe remark because if he tells her you have a beautiful face then she will know that he is a blind person if she is not good looking suppose he tells her oh you are very very fair to look at then she will also she will again know that he can't see her if she is dark to look at but now anybody can tell anyone that you have an interesting face so it was a it was a quite safe remark i was becoming quite daring it was a bold it was a courageous remark no doubt but it was a safe remark few girls resist flattery so i knew it was a safe remark because number one there are two reasons for that the first one she will know she will never know that i am a blind person second one is that every girl enjoys listening to praise flattery every girl likes to be flattered so when i told her she, she had an interesting face i knew she would be happy she laughed pleasantly a clear ringing laugh hearing this compliment she laughed loudly she laughed pleasantly she laughed happily and her laughter was ringing loud it was a clear ringing laugh then she said it's nice to be told i have an interesting face i'm tired of people telling me i have a pretty face now the girl in reply tells him that this is the first time she has been told by somebody that she has an interesting face and she has been tired of hearing people telling her that she has got a pretty face now the writer becomes more courageous more confident and tells her oh you do have a pretty face then i told her oh you have a pretty face too i just told you you have an interesting face an interesting face is pretty as well so i gave her another compliment by saying that she had a pretty face well an interesting face can also be pretty it is nice to be told i have an interesting face i am tired of people telling me i have a pretty face in reply the girl tells him that this is the first time she has been told by somebody that she has an interesting face and she is or she is tired of people telling her that she has a pretty face from this the writer from this the speaker understands that she is very pretty to look at now she he tells himself oh 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 that means you have a pretty face too oh, good good so loudly i told her well i told you have an interesting face because you are pretty an interesting face can also be pretty then she says here in this the girl tells him oh you are a very courageous man you are a very gallant young man gallant young man a gallant a man who is very very considerate to women a, a man who tries to please women he says oh you are a very gallant man you are trying to please me but why are you so serious so you are very gallant you you are courteous to women and you pay compliments to women but i don't understand something why are you very serious i thought then that i would try to laugh for her but the thought of laughter only made me feel troubled and lonely i thought then i should i should make an attempt to laugh but the thought of laughter only made me feel troubled and lonely i couldn't laugh i felt like laughing but i felt odd so i just kept quiet then i told her instead of laughing instead of trying to put on a happy face i told her oh we'll be soon reaching your station you are getting down at sagranpu and we'll be reaching your station soon the girl says thank goodness oh good it's a short journey i can't bear to sit in a train for more than 2 or 3 hours then the girl says she is happy that she is going to reach the station soon 
because she doesn't like to travel by train for a long time. I can't bear to sit in a train for more than two to three hours. So good that my journey is going to an end. Yet, even though she told me that she wouldn't like to sit in the compartment for a long time, I was prepared to sit there for almost any length of time because I liked the girl so much. I wanted to sit and talk to her for any length of time. But she said she would be happy to get out of the train and she was happy that she had a short journey. Yet I was prepared to sit there for almost any length of time just to listen to her talking. So I was willing to, I was prepared to sit in the compartment for any length of time just to listen to her talking. Her voice had the sparkle brightness of a mountain stream, the attraction of a mountain stream. As soon as she left the train, she would forget a brief encounter, but it would stay with me for the rest of the journey and for some time after. Now the writer tells himself, he was prepared to sit in the compartment for any length of time just to listen to her talking since she had the sparkle of a mountain stream. Her voice sparkled, shone like a mountain stream. And he's very sad to know that as soon as she goes out of the train, she'll forget the brief meeting that she had with him, brief encounter, the brief meeting. But it would stay with me for the rest of the journey and for some time after but the writer doesn't want to forget this moment he doesn't want to lose his moment and he says uh, and he's very sure he'll never never forget this moment encounter till he dies